Right. All right. So what we're doing is we're doing ACT uh, going over these questions. Um, and so I'm going to share my screen. All right. Okay. And so uh, we're going over these questions. If you have not done them, pause the video and go ahead and do them now. Okay. Pause the video. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. Pause it. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the answers. All right, the independent variable, it is the what? What is the independent variable? Destiny. The factor of the experiment that's in the equation. Yeah, the factor in the experiment that is changed on purpose. Okay, that is the independent variable. And again, the ACT focuses on, um, it focuses on uh experiments and so when we're talking about experiments you need to know what the independent variable is it's the factor that has changed on purpose what is the dependent variable michaela yeah it's the factor that is measured to get your answer in the experiment Okay, it's whatever, again, to answer your question. So whatever you're trying to answer, whatever question you're trying to answer in the experiment, that's the dependent variable, all right? It says, next one here, the independent variable is typically on which axis on a line graph? The x-axis, all right? And so the x-axis, all right? So the x-axis is what it's on. And again, why this is so important. Again, you get on the ACT, it's, uh, you have 40 questions, 35 minutes for science. That is not enough time to just sit there and read every little detail and doing that. You need to be able to understand how experiments work and be able to read a graph and get the results like boom, 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 okay? And so that's what we're trying to teach you how to do. We're gonna do a practice one today, okay? And then you're gonna do one by yourself too today. So we're doing a couple of them today, all right? The dependent variable is the is going to be on which axis? Y axis. So what you're measuring is going to be on the Y axis. What you're changing on purpose is on the X axis. All right. And again, I again I, I was able to help somebody recently on the ACT for science. And their ACT science section went up three points, which is pretty darn good when they went up. Okay. And so I'm telling you, this stuff works. You just got to give me patient and work with me. Okay. All right, because I helped that one person get theirs up three points. All right. On a table, the independent variable is usually on the left or the right side. What you're changing on purpose, is that usually on the left side or the right side? It is the left side. It's typically on the left side. And the dependent variable is on the right side. And the other variables are going to be either in the middle or on the right. In the middle, like the constants in the middle or right, if it's a table. And then, by the way, you say, well, what is a table? What do you mean by a table versus a graph? I just wanna make sure we're clear on that, all right? Uh, when I mean a table or graph, here is what I'm talking about. Let me give you a full ACT, full ACT, 67C. Come on, computer, go faster. There she is, all right. All right, this is a what? Graph. And this, uh, let me find one here. Come in. Come in. There's nobody else that's going. All right. And this is a, this is a what? A table. So again, the stuff on the left side is typically the what variable? Independent variable. And the, the stuff on the right side is the dependent variable. And again, here's another. Let's find another table real quick just to make sure we're understanding what we're saying here. Maybe there isn't another table here. All right. Table. There's table. Yeah, no tables. Not many tables in this, maybe this ACT science. Nope. No other table. All right. Uh, anyway, so that's what I wanted to show with that. Let's go back over here. All right, um, so we already said that. 
Uh, every sentence has two parts. What are the two parts? Yes, a subject and a predicate. If you can identify the subject and predicate of a sentence, then you have you know what the sentence is about. But if you can't identify the subject and predicate, then you probably don't know what that sentence is about. Okay? Because if you that's like saying the two main parts of the sentence, the subject, who the sentence is about, and the predicate is what that subject is doing or what's being done to it. Okay? What is it doing? And so the subject and predicate. Now, there's sometimes there's another part of the sentence which makes it a complex sentence, which is a dependent clause. What are some words that are, uh, are signs of dependent clauses? Anyone? All right, words like that would be like when. When, when uh, he saw her, uh, he ran to her. Okay. Uh, when he saw her, he ran to her. Okay. If, if I just leave the sentence off with, with the saying, when he saw her, is that a complete sentence? When he saw her, is that a complete sentence? No, because there's, you're like, and what happened? <laughs> okay. All right. And so that is like here. Uh, um, if, if you add a hundred grams to the, uh, to the mass, if you add, here's some examples, if you add 100 grams to the mass, what is that? Is that a, is that a dependent clause or is that an independent clause? That's dependent. That's dependent. You're like, and what are you saying? That means that, is it the main part of the sentence? Is the dependent clause the main part of the sentence? No. The independent clause, which has a subject and a Predicate, that's the main part of the sentence. The dependent clause it is important, but it's not as important as the main part of the sentence. You need to know the independent clause and then add the dependent clause. Because if you know what the independent clause, that's the main part of the sentence, and then you add the dependent clause, then you can say, okay, that's what it wants. Okay. All right, so what we're doing right now is this. We are going to go back over here, all right? And, and this is going to go on page seven. Practice passage charts and graphs C and G, and I'm gonna call it rocks. That's all I'm gonna call it right now. 11:30:22. This is gonna go on. Seven. I just pass it out to you. I C and G, C and G. Uh, the reason I put C and G because it's the type of passage is charts and graphs all right all right so with that said all right <clears throat> this is our first passage all right again what do i tell you to do with these passages do i tell you to read everything no i don't i actually tell you to read the first sentence all right and that's and if it's a, again it's, it's a, a sentence a, a complete sentence has a subject and a so if i know the subject and predicate i know the sentence all right, so let's read the first sentence here. All right, uh, Tanner, would you read the first sentence on this one here? Just say it as best you can. All right, so read it again because you had you were choppy with it. So again, if you have to, if you're choppy with the sentence, that means you really didn't get it really. So read it again. Pre-existing rock. Pre rock. All right, so what's the subject? Metamorphic rocks. And what's the predicate? What is it doing? They cause um, cause changes in pre-existing rock, or they form. Actually, it's form. You're right. Form by they, they met, form is right. So I, I I stand corrected. Thank you, Junior. Thank you for correcting me. I right. form is the part of it, and they form. And there's a dependent cause. They form when when pressure and temperature cause changes in pre-existing pre rock. So metamorphic rocks is the subject. 
form when they do this. Okay. Yes. Yes. It did. All right. And so that's how we do that here. All right. Now I get down over here and I look at this picture right here. All right. That's a what? What is this a picture of? This is a graph. This is a graph. All right. What is the x axis? Temperature is the x axis. X axis goes like horizontal. So the temperature, that's being changed on purpose. purpose. All right. Uh, what are some other things? What are the dependent variables? The pressure and depth. The pressure and depth. All right. All right. So now let's read again. Every time I look at an experiment, I look for three things. These are the three things I look for in this, an experiment. I look for the independent variable, dependent variable, and the, the results. All right. So I'm looking for all three of those. Well, I've already got two. What's the independent variable? Temperature. All right. What's the dependent variable? There are actually two here. Pressure and depth. All right. Yes. You got to need to write it probably over here on the side. IV. And we'll probably write over here. IV, DV, and results. Okay. All right, so the IV is the temperature, the DV is the pressure and depth. And what are the results? Um, as we get to higher, we have temperatures, again, all which ones, uh, as our temperature increases or as our depth increases, what does our, uh, as our depth increases, what does our pressure do? If, if depth gets higher, the pressure gets higher. If depth gets higher, pressure gets higher. And again, you wouldn't have to, you just, I'm just trying to teach you how to read a graph. I want you to be able to like, kill it, okay? That's what I want you to do. And like for Fassi's G, what Fassi's G only forms at what? It, does it form in the shallow layers or does fascist G, fascist G uh, form in the depth? Yeah. Depth. And does it form at what temperature? Does it form at 100 degrees Celsius or beyond 100 degrees Celsius? Yeah. All right. It forms at uh, beyond 100. So we got to get an idea. All right. How about fascist C? All right. Is it formed at 1,000 degrees? Yeah. No. All right. If a fascist C is formed from pressure of Four, I forgot whatever that is. I can't see it. It says kilo B. I don't know what it is here, but it says that right here. Uh, and all the way up to 14, that's the pressure. And it's also formed from 10 to 40 kilometers in depth. So again, that is what we're trying to see. So we kind of get an idea what this table is about. Now I'm going to look at the next one. And again, I'm trying to teach you how to read it quickly. Okay. I'm going to read one more sentence. Okay. I'm not reading a lot. You can see I'm not reading a lot. All right, Kaleeb, read the next sentence here where it says, the rocks. All right, I like how you skip the parentheses. That's great, because that the parentheses are not part of the sentence. That was great reading here. All right, and so the met now, now I say, well, I don't know what metamorphic grade is. I don't know what it is. Tell me what metamorphic grade is. Now tell me what it is. Okay. All right. And it says low means, what does low mean? Very similar to the And then what does high mean? Very different. Okay. So metamorphic grade, that's what they're trying to say. If it's low, if the intensity is low, that means it's still very what? Similar to the original rock. If it's high, that means it is very different. Now let's look over here. All right, a table. When I look at a table, what's on the left side? The what variable? Independent variable. I do recognize who's paying attention. I will hold you at the end and stuff and that type of deal. And I will deduct from you here. So pay attention here. And the metamorphic grade is on the... What it, the met, that's going to be the what? The independent or dependent variable? Dependent. So what we're measuring. So low, 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 all the way up to high. Which one is the one that's, which type of rock is probably the most different? 
G. So G is going to be the most different. That's also the deepest one. So that's interesting. So the one that's deepest is going to cause have the most change. All right. The ones that are uh, A and B, they're kind of in the shallow range. So they are going to be low, very similar. So that kind of teaches us something right here. All right. I've got a couple things. I'm already finished with that here. So I kind of say deeper rocks. I might make a quick note. Deeper rocks more are more what? Yeah. Are more different. All right. The next thing here. All right, so what is the, the scan? This is kind of a, a sliding graph scale. All right, what is it showing right here? It's showing, it's, what is the thing, the different grades? And the ones that are low grade, that means they are similar to the original rock. The ones that are high grade, they're very different. And the ones that are, that are in all, that means they're in all different areas here. They're all different areas. So that's what we're trying to say here. Now we're ready to read the questions. Again, I'm not, again, this is not rocket science, okay? This is, we can do this. It's an experiment. All we're trying to do is understand the results of an experiment, okay? That's what we're trying to do. All right, so, all right, so when I read this question right here, this is uh, according to figure two, all right? First off, according to figure two, is that, that's a what cause? So is that the main part of the sentence? No, so what the main part of the sentence is coming right now. Which of the following minerals would most typically found only in rocks of a medium grade? All right, so which one would be a medium grade? All right, so medium grade, all right. Muscovite could be low or medium. If you look right here, it could be low or medium. Biotite can be low or medium. Kyanite is only what? medium and then flake uh plagioclase is all so which one's the answer all right it is not that bad that's what we're trying to tell you these are not that bad all right i'm going to give you one minute to do the next question here i want you to take one minute i'm going to come and check it in a second see if you get it you get it wrong good it's good to get it wrong because that word means we're learning It's good to get it wrong. It's good to get it right, but it's good to get it wrong. It's just trying and being bold. check see what you got if you got it wrong great i want i want this one this right here that one right here. Number two. i didn't even look at that one yet you're, ready. you're done one i haven't even done all right we are killing it already some of y'all are killing it all right if you get it wrong good two yes okay right. let me see your answers okay you can ride on this. All right. All right, Emily, you're going to help me lead through this problem here. All right, Emily, uh, read the question out loud. All right, so what does the question want to know? Yeah, so a fascist G rock, and what will it form right here? So here's fascist G. We need to look at the temperature and the pressure. All right, so where does fascist G with pressure form typically at? Between what and what? 
Uh, thank you, Emily. No, the pressure's right here. Yeah, 10 and 12 or 10 and 14, okay? And then what temperature does it typically occur at? Huh? From 150 to... Fasci's G is this one right here. So Fasci's G rock forms from anywhere from 150 to... 600 doesn't end there. It keeps going all the way to 1,000. All right, so it forms between 10 and 14 kilobars pressure and between 150 and 1,000 gram, uh, kilo uh, centigram, centigram, Celsius, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, which one of these is the best answer? Huh? All right, so... Again, a 10 and 14, all right, 10 and 14, that's where Fasci's G is. It's not at, a C would make it at eight. That is not going to be over there, all right? Because eight is there, I don't see any Fasci's G at eight. You know what I'm saying? So what would be another one? J, correct. J is correct. All right, again, I'm teaching you how to read them, all right? Do the next one. I'm coming around in one minute. That one's super easy. Nah, Aaron, that's okay. You're doing great. I'm probably only going to give you 30 seconds for this one. Because if you don't have it, that's you got to get this one quick. This is one of those money questions. If you got one of these... Money questions, you get quick. You get them and get their easy questions. They give you points. Uh, a hard question is worth the same as an easy question. Our answer is C, all right? Our answer is C, all right? Uh, I'm going to have Destiny walk through the question with us. <clears throat> Destiny, would you read number three? All right, so what does the question want to know? That of what? Read again. So what does it want to know? Yeah, if if what happens? Yes. All right. So if in figure one, here's figure one. All right. As depth increases, here's pressure over here. What does pressure do? As depth went up, you, I, I mean, it went up, what does pressure do? Increases, yes. So our answer is C. All right, well, the pressure here is, it says right here on this, the dependent variable is, this is the depth. So as depth number increases, here's the pressure number. It also did what? As your depth went deeper, your pressure also, yes, we're looking at the numbers, uh -huh, the pressure. Uh -huh. All right, next one. I want you to do number four. Come around in one minute. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
to it's over over on my closet over there. You grab it. Right. Uh, we're gonna do fifty minutes. That's what we're doing. Past eight. Yes, this will. Yeah, because we're doing. I'm counting as great. Should this does count as a great? Now, ACT does not, but it's in order to get into schools and get scholarships, you have to have that. So, right. Oh, yeah, I didn't know the answer. All right, let me see what you got. All right. Uh, our answer four. So you have it there. I'm sorry. Okay. Our answer is J. Okay. Our answer is J. All right. Maya is going to help us with this one here, real quick. Maya, would you read number four? Of which of the following all right and so all right what did the question want to know which type of in determining what look at it if you need to which one's the least helpful in determining the the grade and remember the rocks grade is low medium or high low medium or high is the lock rocks grade and if it's low that means it's still similar to the old rock if it's high that means it's very different from the old rock all right all right um and so let's look at the first one that first one says chloride chloride is All right, it seems like that would be kind of helpful to understand what type of grade it is. All right, the next one is muscovite. Muscovite is still low and medium, so it's not the most helpful. Chlorite's more helpful. All right, how about um, starolite? It's mainly medium, so yeah, that seems like that would be very helpful. What about plagiocase? All right, what is a plagio case made in? Which grade? It's all of them. All of them. So if it's made in all of them, is it going to be helpful for you to determine? No, it won't. It won't be helpful. So if I find, oh, this is plagio case rock, club clay rock, you're like, well, that doesn't matter what grade is because that's formed in all of them. So that's the least helpful. All the other ones would be more helpful because you say, well, this is only formed in low grade rock. This is only formed in this type of rock. And so if you found that type of rock, you know what type of grade you have, okay? All right, and so that's what they're trying to say right here. All right, so the answer is J. All right, last one. Let's do the last one right here. Um, uh, Hornfells. Uh, I'm gonna give you one minute to do this one here. No, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come around in one second here. <clears throat> <laughs> all right let me see our answer is a a is correct all right and again the point is i love this stuff because it is not as hard as you 
think. I, it is not as hard as you think. It says, let's read the question. This is a big. Let's read the question real quick. I had to think about whether I want to do what I want to do. That's why I'm trying to make a decision. All right, let's read the question right here. Uh, Mandy, read this question out loud. Five. Hold on, I got to start over because people are disrupting. What did you say? Go ahead and start over. All right, read it again. But when we get to that period and when we get to a comma, pause. A period means stop. And uh, a comma is like a yield sign. Okay. All right. So when I read a period, I stop and think about what I just read. And when I read a comma, I pause and then I read the rest. It's like a yield sign. Okay. All right. Read it one more time. All right. So what is the question, Wanna? No. Yes. And they said, what do they say about Hornfeld? They described it. It's a sedimentary rock near where? The surface. All right. So if I look back over here, which rock is nearest the Earth's surface? Hey, all the other ones aren't. That makes sense. This is not that bad. All right. The point is, you just got to keep on it. All the whole ACT is pretty much is a bunch of experiments. All right. The science section of the ACT is a bunch of experiments. And your job is to understand what did they do in the experiment? What did they change on purpose? What did they measure? And what were the results? What did they change on purpose? What did they measure? And what were the results? And then you have to be able to read well and understand what the question wants. Yes. Yeah, you could have looked a little like the ocean, This, but this is more sort of rocks. But you can, again, as ocean, same thing as you get deeper, the pressure goes up and stuff like that. So you could have looked at a little like that. Yes. Uh -huh. Number five told you the answer here. Yes. Yeah, so the earth, that, and that was a hint. Yeah. So that was the hint. All right. And so what we're going to think we're going to do is we're going to, I want you to do this real quick. And take this passage. It's five questions, and I want you to do it by yourself. I'm going to give you how many minutes? Five minutes, and then we're done for the day. I'm not. All I'm going to do is tell you the answer. You will not. I will grade it. You will get a grade based off of your answers. All right. So do your best. All right. I will. I'm going to take them up and grade them. Okay. And then I'll give them right back to you. It's only going to take how many minutes? Five minutes because there's how many questions? Five. I'm going to set the timer for one minute. The one minute means that's how long you should be looking at the passage and the questions and the figures. And then the last four minutes is what you do for the all the questions. But you can take as much time as you want looking at the passage. What do I typically taught you to do? How much of the sentence do you read at first? First sentence. First sentence. All right, the first sentence. All right, and then I look at the graph, the table of the graphs. And then after I look at all that, I'm going to spend the last four minutes doing other parts. Go ahead and begin. I'm going to set time for one minute, but that doesn't mean you're up. You have four more minutes after that.
All right, that doesn't mean your time's up. You still have four more minutes to do the questions. But that's about that's an estimate time of how long you should be looking at the passage and the questioning here. Now go do the questions if you haven't, or you can spend more time on the passages. But you only have four more minutes. Don't look at other people's. Look, do your own. You guys should put your name on. We'll take it up in just a minute. Yes. Hannah. Hannah, yes. All right, thank you. Okay. No, just a moment. All right, I, I'm going to give you an extra 30 to 40 seconds to do finish it because I don't want you to, again, that's time. ACT is time, all right? And I've given you more time than you'd get normally for a question. I'm going to give you an extra 30 because of the disruption.
<clears throat> All right, stop. Put your pencil down. Make sure your name's on it real quick. Put your pencil down. I'm going to collect them. Make sure your name's on it. All right. <laughs> All right, Dan, make sure your name's on it. I'll give them right back to you in just about a minute or two minutes. Write your name on it. It's practice. It's like, again, it's exercise. If you're getting it wrong, you're doing something again. You're doing something right because sometimes getting wrong is learning. You're going to learn, okay? Getting things wrong is okay. All right, that's how you learn. All right. That's cool that you got them. You're out there and you're trying. You're doing ACT stuff and you're in ninth grade and you're going to get ready. You're going to be ready for that ACT. You got two years, a little bit over two years, and then you have to take it. You can take it anytime. If you go sign up on ACT.org, you can sign up anytime on a Saturday and they'll let you take it. All right, I need you to tape in that ACT practice passage. I want you to tape them into your notebook. Let me show you where I want them taped in. Yes, we're going to tape them in right here. So this is page five. This is, this was five. They, these were those questions right here. Let me uh, put it right here. All right, thank you. All right, I'm going to tape them in so you can see what I'm expecting here from you. All right, you're going to tape this one here is what it's going to look like. I'm about to put it back. All right, so tape this one. This is page five. That's this sheet, the thing that you just did. And, or didn't you just do this on page five? Oh, this is page six. I'm sorry. My apologies. I said it wrong. I screwed up. This is page six. Thank you, Caleb. This is going to go on page six. This is the bell ringer that you did. This is page six. This is going to be page seven. This, these two pages will be seven. All right, on page seven, I already told you that seven is going to be named uh, the uh, charts and graphs passage and bases of rock. All right, so I'm writing the page number so you can see them. This is six. And this is seven. And then eight is the sheet when you get this back. This will be eight. This right here will be eight. Okay. All right. So with that said, uh, that's the end of this video. And we are done for the day. And uh, sit and chill for the rest of the period.